Thanks for this opportunity to speak about my work in this Cometrics workshop. So uh, now I will talk about transmitting closure uh, spanner of directed lens, and this is joint work with uh, Anna Katachaya and Lena Grigolesk and Sofia Raskotnikova and David Google. Uh, given a directed wave G, uh, we define a wave spanner of G as follows. So a uh, sub wave H of the G is called a K spanner. So if uh, given a wave G, if H is a sub wave, and then for any pair of U and V in a given wave G, like this and this, then the distance in H, distance of U and V in a directed sense in H is at most k times of the original distance in G. So basically we choose some subgraph, every subgraph of uh, G, and then we want to maintain that the distance loose in the multiplicative sense in H is at most k, k times than the original graph. Mm -hmm. U is uh, in G? Yes. Oh. So uh, H has the same vertex. Uh. I think it's spinning, spinning some. Spinning some. Right. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so the goal is finding the sparsest K spanner of given graph G. So, and uh, the given of graph, directed graph G, a uh, transitive closure spanner of the G is defined uh, as follows. So suppose that this is a given directed wave, then the transitive closure of G is the, uh, defined as a graph G with the same vertex, and any two pairs of the vertex in G is directed, uh, has a directed edge if there is a path from uh, vertex to the other vertex. Direct, if there is a directed path in the original graph. So for example, if G is a directed line, then transitive closure of G will be given by this form. <coughs> and then K transitive closure spanner, or we say a KTC spanner H of G, uh, is defi defined as the uh, transitive uh, is the case panel of the transitive closure uh, of G. So it is a subset of the transitive closure of G, and then it has the property that whenever the two vertices in the transitive closure G uh, has an edge, then the distance in the in H is at most k. So basically, we choose some subset in the transitive closure of G, and then we want to make sure that when the two vertex is connected, uh, is with by a directed path in original graph G, then in our choice of this transitive closure, the distance uh, in H is at most k. So for example, let's consider a uh, as before, a directed line, then we can construct that initially the, the side of the transitive closure has edge of order n square because for any two pair of the graph, it is connected by a directed edge. So uh, in many applications, the construction on edge uh, requires a cost of building the link. So the, we want to have some uh, sub of of having small number of edges. So uh, then by the following constru construction, we can construct a, a TC spanner, two TC spanner <coughs> having just order of uh, n log n. So for this, first, uh, let's say we take one vertex in the center of this line and then I connect all the all the vertices before this one to 
this to the center vortex, and from this center vortex connect to the older edges that is after or after uh, this vortex. And let's say this is the first page. After this first page, we divide the graph into two parts, and then do the same thing for each of these parts uh, independently. And do this again, and again, and again. So by doing this, we will have a log n many phases. And then at each phase, we will have uh, actually exactly n many <coughs> um, edges, new edges that is added at each stage. So the total number of edges is uh, n of n, order of n of n. And uh, we can check that this is a two spanner because if the vertex U is in this side and V is in this side, uh, it is connected by this center vertex. Uh, it's like hubble for the uh, like transportation. First go to this and then to this. And then if the two vertices are in the same first half, and then it is divided by this second phase. Like U is here and then V is here, then you can connect to here and then to here. So basically, it's like there is like it's a layer the structure for the transportation. So basically, by doing this, uh, we can obtain a two panel, two tissue panel of this line graph. So this concept is known um, from some long time. I would say some historically in many contexts, and then uh, in our work, uh, we abstract this uh, idea in into any uh, general, general given uh, a cyclic direct, directed graph, and then we obtain, uh, its uh, we provide its application, and then uh, approximation algorithm for obtaining two TC panel for general graph, and then show hardness for obtaining some approximation up to some point, and another construction for restricted class of graph, including a planar graph. And so similarly, we can also define like three TCS panel and four TCS panel like that for the for this graph. And um, after you, after some thought, you can find out that the size of the TCS we can construct a three TCS panel of size n log of n, uh, basically by having more of this half instead of this one in the first page, and going into the. Uh, into a detailed level. And for the 40 feet panel, you can find that the size is order of n log star n. Here, uh, log star is the function, uh, the number of log, log star n is the number of times we need to apply log function to make that uh, number becomes less than one. So actually, it's very slowly growing function. So for uh, any cons any k, uh, one can one can uh, easily check that the size of the k t is panel is at most uh, order of n uh, lambda k comma n, where lambda k comma n is the k slow inverse Ackermann function. This is uh, actually very slowly growing function when especially when k is as k goes uh, becomes bigger. So for this setup, uh, previously. Uh, there was some known result, like like in the line case, for uh, the upper bound on the side of the sparse K T C scanner in many con uh, contents, context like uh, data structure and uh, property testing, uh, especially for testing given uh, function is a monotonically increasing or not, and then in for the data access control, and also so. And for the directed spanner, not the directed, not the uh, directed uh, TT spanner, there is some there are some known results for obtaining uh, approximation of the size of the uh, sparse K K spanner. Oh, it is. So, uh, for example, when K is equal to two, uh, the log n order of log n approximation algorithm is known, and then when K is equal to three, then order of n to the uh, two-third, roughly two-third uh, approximation is known. And then 
for bigger case, bigger K case, uh, you just not know. So whatever our result is, we obtain also approximation algorithm uh, for K is bigger than 4, even for the directed dependent case. So uh, as I briefly said, our result is, can be uh, characterized as the following three things. The first, uh, uh, we show that the concept of, by using the this concept of the uh, KTC spanner, we show that uh, it can be used for proper, uh, fast property testing, uh, especially for checking the monotonicity of a function defined on a given uh, partially ordered set, and then some uh, access control, access key control, and then some data structures. And for in the case when the given graph is a uh, uh, planar graph or some other path separable graph, uh, I will explain the path separable graph later. Then we obtain an um, upper bound or the, let's say good upper bound on the side of the parties KTC panel. And so for then for the general graph case, we also obtain an algorithm for obtaining the <coughs> For uh, algorithm for approximate uh, computation of the size of the KTC spanner, and then show that actually, but the approximation ratio is uh, not that good. It's uh, roughly order of n to the uh, uh, n to the one minus one of k, so it's not that good. And we show that actually it is quite hard problem to approximate. So first, um, the one important application is testing whether a given uh, whether a given function defined on a partially ordered set is uh, uh, increasing or not. So it's same for in case when the this is a ordered line, it's same as testing whether a given list is a sorted or not. And for this, for this problem, uh, of course, if you want to check the check this property uh, perfectly, then we need to at least n number of uh, function inquire to the given list. Uh, however, if you want to check whether the given list, uh, given given list of numbers is epsilon far from sorted or not. So here, the concept of the epsilon phi is in the sense of the editing the list. So, so we change the number of n epsilon fraction of the list, uh, entries of the list, so that it can be it can become a sorted list. If if that is the case, then we say that uh, uh, if it, I'm sorry, if it requires at most at least uh, epsilon fraction of the list. Uh, Change it, then we say that the uh, list is from the far from. So, say, so if you want to check this epsilon far from this from of the uh, sorted list, then uh, Elgun et al. has shown has shown that essentially by checking the checking whether the given two endpoints of the uh, two TC spanner of a line is in a given sorted way or not. We can check this by uh, checking it uh, order of uh, log n over epsilon times. So uh, initially they did it uh, for this line case and then uh, one internet, one some natural uh, generalization is what about then if you want to check the uh, monotonicity of a given function in any given partially ordered set, like uh, grid graph or like hypercube case or any other given general case. So of course in this case we say a function is epsilon far from monotone if we need at least epsilon fraction of label change, the function value change to make sure that uh, change to make the function, the given function, into a monotonically increasing function for each 
yeah. in D for this partially ordered uh, domain. And so we observe that uh, for any given TC spanner, uh, if we can construct a TC spanner, two TC spanner for the given graph G, if we check uh, the monotonicity for each edge of this TC spanner, check whether those two endpoints of the two um, endpoints of these two uh, if this edge is monotonically increasing or not, we can check and then by doing it order of uh, SN over epsilon N here where SN is the size of the two TC spanner of G, then we can obtain a uh, uh, we can check the whether a given function is monotonically increasing or not. So so for this, now we have uh, worked on showing actually and constructing uh, the two C, uh, K, KTC spanner for a given graph G. And then first I explain our result for the general graph. Uh, we have worked on computation in for some restricted cases like when the given graph is a planar graph. Uh, for that case, uh, we obtain the following results. That is, uh, when the given graph G is uh, some constant path separable, then the graph has KTC spanner of size order of n log n lambda k comma n. Here, lambda k comma n is the as before the uh, case law of uh, inverse Ackermann function that grows very slowly, especially as k becomes larger. So it's roughly very close to like n of n. It's very uh, sparse graph, actually. So from this result, uh, we improve running time of one search tester. Uh, for example, uh, on planar graph from the previously known best bound of like uh, n to the uh, roughly root n over epsilon to uh, order of log square n over epsilon. Uh, because of this, we obtained that when k is equal to 2, this is log n, so n log square n. That from the previous one, this result, we obtained that the monotony toxicity test for planar graph can be done in this number of time. It's quite small. <coughs> so, uh, the path separator of given graph is defined as follows. Before I explain the path separator, I will begin with uh, the like usual vertex separator. So this concept is developed from a Lipton and Tarzan from early days. Then it is defined as follows. So given a graph G, if we remove uh, S nodes in the graph G, then after we remove this, then this graph is disconnected into uh, many, let's say, some connected components, so that each connected component has size and most half of the original graph. So especially when the planar graph, it is known that uh, the size, when S is order of size root to N, then we can achieve this goal. Like, like in a like chessboard, we can, by removing like root to N number of uh, vertices, we can divide the graph into like half size. So uh, this property is, uh, in many cases, uh, critically used to show some good approximation for many problems, for especially like planar graph. So however, in our case, this uh, does, does, not, does not directly apply, and we require the following uh, form of the separator, that is uh, our path separator. So for, uh, we say, Given of F G, given of F G, we say that uh, uh, some node is a node of the graph G. Some uh, a subset of node of the graph G is a R separator. If this is this forms a R path of the. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, we say a given graph is R R set 
uh, uh, has as a parameter, if this is the case that for any given graph G and any spanning tree of the given graph G, then removing those on R paths, we can choose some R paths, R many number of paths in the uh, spanning tree. And then by removing these vertices, uh, we, can we can make G into this connected component having size and most n over 2. So interesting thing is, uh, for many cases, we can make sure that we can have very small number of R paths, small number of R in the case even in the case when S usually as separated sense the number is quite large. For example in the planar graph uh, the size of S the planar graph is usually so separable to ten separable. However it is known that it is three test separable. So we obtain the previous uh, result. Uh, also we obtain a uh, Algorithm for computing the sparsity space panel, and so previously when k is equal to two and k is equal to three, then it is known that uh, the appro uh, uh, this approximation uh, algorithm for com on the side of the k space panel is known. Uh, however, we obtain for any, we obtain that for any k that is bigger than 2, we can construct a TC spanner of size this. So, yet the approximation ratio, especially when k becomes larger, uh, is not that good. However, as we show later, uh, we show that this problem is quite large. So, for this, we apply uh, our technical method is basically applying uh, linear programming, integer programming, and then uh, LP relaxation, and then we do some random sampling over the some edges too. So, uh, in a technical sense, this is a, uh, um, uh, I believe that this is a novel approach or uh, in the combination of linear programming and then random sampling. And for hardness, uh, we show that uh, when when k is equal to two, then uh, under the assumption that p is not equal to mp, uh, it is not possible to approximate uh, the KTC spanner uh, of uh, to log n vector uh, by in polynomial time. So for this for this case, we use uh, the set cover problem, reduction from the set cover problem. And when k is bigger than 2, and it is a constant number, and we also show that this problem is hard to approximate within this vector under, the, under this assumption. And for this reduction, we use a reduction from a minimal problem. Uh, so I will briefly explain the, our approximation algorithm. So let's say for any uh, k is bigger than 2, we, uh, we have achieved this approximation algorithm. And basically our technique is like balancing the linear programming and the sam some random sampling based approach. So, and also actually it uh, simplifies the previously, it has the same bound and simplifies the previously known uh, approximation for k is equal to 3, 2. So basically, uh, let's say uh, our L LP is defined as follows. For each edge E of the given graph G, we assign, so fa first we define a <coughs> integer programming so that uh, for each E edge of the graph, we assign a binary variable for each edge. And then for any path of length M of K, we also assign a binary variable for to each to the path. So when k is a constant, the number of such paths is bounded by polynomial. So for this, uh, we need constant k. So for each do, each of those paths, we assign a binary variable, variable, and then for each of these edges, also a binary variable. Then we can naturally define an integer programming that is required for our construction. 
So that is like having at least one path of length m of k between any pair of vertices adjacent. Uh, uh, actually, we we, we solve this problem for usual uh, the spanner of the given directly map, not TT spanner. So it's more general. It can be applied to more general senses too. So for any, so we have the requirement that uh, we have at least one pass. That means the <coughs> binary variable for this at least one of them is one, or each. Uh, each pair that is comparable in G. Then also we make sure that for each pass P, if the pass is become to one, then all the vertex variable, uh, uh, the edge variable has value one. So this is the requirement, and this is the second the requirement for the spanner. Then this is natural, and then we our goal is minimizing the total number of edges included. Then naturally we think of the linear programming relaxation and then solve the linear programming and then we include the edges having the value bigger than this threshold. It's kind of actually quite large, small number. Then the problem for this approach is that when <coughs> for two vertices there are small number of passes, then uh, this can be somewhat large in some sense. So we can have some good uh, result for these cases. But some problem occurs when for the two uh, comparable vertices, when there are many passes between them, then because the pass value for each of them can be like, have some even evenly distributed value for in the uh, linear programming case for those many values. So this approximation, then makes actually the approximation ratio become bad. So our basic idea is that after we solve this linear problem and then include all of these edge vertices, edge values, then it that satisfies this. We also uh, sample uh, this many vertices randomly and then obtain a, a breadth plus search tree of some depth and then include all the edges in the tree, in the breadth search, first search tree. Then combine this result, uh, combine these edges and this results to all together. Then we show that the, the obtained uh, subgraph H is a case panel of G with the probability at least one over one, uh, one over one, min one minus one over N. So this is the basic idea of our approach. Uh, so, so as your conclusion, I just explained we have um, obtained those results. And then some remaining open question is, uh, we have considered that when k is uh, constant, then what about then if k is dependent on edge function, dependent on n, like uh, root to n or log n, like that. Uh, so in that case, can you obtain some more efficient algorithm for the uh, spaces kTT scanner? Uh, and then another question is, what about then restrict restricted class of graph, like hypercube uh, or some other class of graph. So currently we have obtained the hypercube case and then we have obtained a good approach, some matching upper and lower bound for the size of the KTC panel for this case. Thank you.